Hi, this is Professor Paul Knopfler here at UC Davis School of Medicine. I'm a stem cell researcher, but I also do educational outreach, including through these videos, to try to help the public and even other scientists and physicians better understand what's going on in the stem cell field. Today's video is all about the idea of using stem cells or other kinds of related products, including one called platelet-rich plasma or PRP, to treat lung disease. Does that really work? You know, let's fact check this. What's the data out there? Uh, what are some things you should be thinking about or be concerned about? So to get going on this, I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen and we can go to my site called The Niche and you can check it out here. Let me scroll up to the top. <clears throat> and what you can see is here's this post. Uh, in this post, I mainly talked about one particular clinic called the Lung Health Institute. There are actually quite a few different clinics out there selling, whether it's stem cells or this other stuff I was telling you, PRP. They're, they're all kind of marking this idea of cell therapies, quote unquote, uh, for different kinds of lung disease like COPD or emphysema, pulmonary fibrosis. Uh, we've even seen in the last year or so, uh, stem cell clinics claiming they can treat or prevent COVID-19 using different kinds of stem cells or related products, which is really something to be worried about. Um, so let's jump right in again. Here's my site, The Niche. It's, it's a blog, but it's also got many other resources. I'm adding videos like this one to it. Uh, if you like this video or other uh, videos in our um, channel here on YouTube, please subscribe. So here's just an overview of what's in this article. If you actually go to my site, ipscell.com, and go to this article, you'll be able to jump to different sections of it. I've also started including in a lot of my posts this sort of handy feature, which is sort of a quick summary of the article. If you're in a hurry or something like that, you can go through it. Uh, I also am including in some cases a claim review. And so the big picture take home in this video is that the claim basically is that stem cells or other kinds of therapies like this uh, platelet extract uh, can really make a difference for patients with COPD, emphysema, and pulmonary fibrosis. Now, the data actually does not support this, unfortunately. So it's really an unsupported claim. These are very expensive. There are likely to be risks involved. Some reputable organizations like the American Lung Association are recommending against using stem cells for lung disease at this time. So it's really something I think at this point, you know, I'm not a physician, but as a stem cell biologist, you know, even though I can't give medical advice, like I wouldn't personally do this or recommend like a loved one or family member do it. So I thought a good place to start is just talk a little bit about uh, lung stem cell research. Uh, for a long time, interestingly, it wasn't really thought that lungs had stem cells themselves. And, and now we, we know, in fact, they do have different kinds of stem cells. The bigger question is really whether or not these, uh, what we call endogenous stem cells that live in our lungs, uh, can really make any meaningful difference for uh, injury to lung to the lung or the respiratory system. The data on that is pretty unclear at this time. It, it's not necessarily the case that one knows, for example, that um, they can these stem cells can and can somehow fix an injured lung uh, without anyone uh, having to do anything else. And my best guess is that over time, as a patient has a chronic lung disease, for instance, if there are stem cells in there that can help out, um, they're probably going to fade with time and that chronic injury is really going to exhaust them. And this is where sort of the idea of giving a stem cell transplant uh, comes in. And, and that's where uh, what we're really going to focus on here uh, in today's video. So there are a lot of clinics out there that sell the idea of stem cells for lungs. Some used to sell the idea of stem cells for lungs and now sell something else like PRP, which is the case um, as best as I can tell from the Lung Health Institute's own website. Uh, so the idea here is that uh, in, in these cases, you're the basic principle that is being sold is that you're going to take stem cells either from some other person or more often from yourself, or you're going to take different blood products that you make from a patient like this PRP stuff, and you're going to inject it into the arm of the patient with lung disease or respiratory disease. And I guess the idea is that somehow either the stem cells that you inject in the arm or this PRP, which is like a concentrate of, of the plate or rich part of blood, will go from your arm in your vein and somehow get to the lungs and help the lungs. Now, unfortunately, there's really almost no evidence that this actually happens. And if you think about it, there are some real obstacles to this. So um, like with the Lung Health Institute, they're, they're selling this idea of platelet-rich plasma, this platelet extract, but you make it from blood and then you re-inject it into the bloodstream where in my mind, at least it would get diluted, right? And then 
end up by the time it gets to the lungs, even if it's not 100% diluted in the blood, um, is it really gonna be able to do anything to help the lungs? So, you know, this idea may seem far-fetched to me. I'm trying to sort of put on my scientist hat or my lab coat and think about it and, and go to the data out there. Uh, because, you know, sometimes there are ideas that we're initially skeptical about, but there, there may be more substance to them than we think. So when I turn to the database of research articles that are out there and try to find any research on using platelet extracts or stem cells for lung disease, there's really not much there to support what's being sold, unfortunately. So I think, you know, in that sense, in terms of the data, also for me, at least personally, in terms of common sense, using PRP for lung disease, it just doesn't really pa pass my fact checking. You know, I don't see good evidence uh, from like uh, rigorous double-blinded uh, controlled clinical trials that this is really a good idea. And um, so here, this is that part of the post where I was sort of trying to dig through the literature, look on this database PubMed for articles. I didn't find many articles and they're fairly inconclusive. On the clinic's own website, they have a results page. To me, that didn't seem convincing either. You know, that's just my opinion as a stem cell biologist. If we focus in not so much on the PRP side, but just on the stem cell side um, for COPD and other lung diseases, here again, it doesn't necessarily make a lot of sense. So, you know, for me, as I think about this, um, for instance, let's say you're gonna take fat stem cells. So like from a mini liposuction from your stomach, and you're going to get the, the cell part of that out and you're gonna inject it into someone's arm who has lung disease and that's gonna help them somehow have their lung disease get better. You know, it doesn't necessarily make a lot of sense. Um, these fat stem cells might get filtered out uh, from the blood in the lungs. Um, my guess is probably they're destroyed once they get to the lungs. There's a lot of immune cells there like these cells called macrophages that just eat up things that are not supposed to be in the lungs and fat stem cells are really, as far as I know, not really supposed to be in the lungs. Uh, even if you think about other kinds of stem cells like um, stem cells from um, the umbilical cord. So this would be not your own cells, you know, they're from a baby or a placenta or the amniotic membrane or bone marrow. None of these things really make sense to me to inject IV and then they're gonna somehow help your lungs or your respiratory system in general. You know, again, maybe I'm too skeptical. So I try to go to PubMed, go to clinicaltrials.gov, look for different trials that are out there on stem cells for lung disease. There's really not, again, there's not the evidence there to support doing this or selling this on a commercial basis. Uh, in the example of the Lung Health Institute with their, their parent PRP um, procedure, it costs a lot of money, right? And, and my sense is that these kinds of things are not a permanent fix. So if you have to get this done every few months, you know, pretty soon your bank account might be empty. And, and this goes for other stem cell clinics as well. So I'm not gonna go through some of these things like who owns the Lung Health Institute, but I just wanted to give a bigger picture overview of this idea of stem cells or PRP for lung disease. Now I should say again, kind of circling back to COVID-19, there are dozens of clinical trials undergoing to see if stem cells might help COVID-19. I personally am, somewhat skeptical about the promise of that idea, but we'll see, you know, we'll see what the data tell us. And there, that's, that's a different situation, right? These are FDA approved clinical trials, the ones in the US, there are also trials going on in other countries like China that are approved by regulators there. There's <clears throat> in some cases, at least some data to support what they're doing. They, they you know, crossed all the T's, dotted the I's to get uh, regulator approval. So I think we'll have to see how that goes. And that's specifically the idea of stem cells helping the kind of lung disease we see with COVID-19, which is very unique and is different than say COPD. So that's kind of my take on the idea of stem cells and PRP for lung disease. If you go to this post, you'll also see some references here. I've got a few notes. So uh, I'll go ahead and stop sharing my screen. And I just wanna thank you for listening and uh, please weigh in in the comments if you have questions or feedback on this. Again, this is Paul Knopfler from UC Davis and I hope to see you next time. Bye.